this next skin retouching technique I'm about to show you is the one that's most likely used by high-end retouchers. And the reason for this is because you have a lot more control over the final result. Although the downside is it takes a little longer to get the job done. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer which we're going to work on and I'm going to rename this Skin Smooth. And for this technique we'll be using the stamp tool. And if you're not already on it then just hit the S key or you can come straight here. So I'm going to zoom in on Rebecca's face to start off with. So command space bar, click and drag to zoom in, zoom in on the face. Maybe a little bit closer. Now for this technique I'll, I normally like to have my opacity at about 20-21%, something along those lines. And when I'm brushing, a good rule of thumb to have is have your brush size about a third of the size of the area that you're trying to smooth. So if I'm going to work on the forehead here, I just need to reduce my brush size down a little bit with the left bracket key, down to about maybe there looks pretty good. And this technique involves sampling a section of the skin that you need to smooth and not moving from that point to another area, but merely sampling it and then sweeping the brush across the area that you're trying to smooth. And with every sweep of the clone tool, you want to option click beforehand. You want to sample in between every brush stroke. I'll show you what I mean. So with this section of the forehead, which I'm about to smooth, I'll option click and then sweep. Option click, sweep. Option click, sweep. And so on. And the reason why I'm sam making a, taking a sample in between every brush stroke and this is because if I don't take a sample in between every brush stroke, then instead of just smoothing the skin, I'll end up making a copy of the area that I've sampled and I'll end up with a ghosting effect. And so even now, if I was to give you a quick before and after, before and after, you can see with even just a few brush strokes, already the skin's starting to smooth out. And the reason why the skin's smoothing is because even though I'm sampling the same spot as I'm brushing over, the cursor's not always in the exactly the same spot. It's always moved a little bit. And as a result, the skin is kind of generalizing. And that's why you get this overall blurring effect. So I'm about to move into the middle of the nose area. So I'll just reduce my brush size a little bit. Option click, sweep. Option click, sweep. And so on. Now you just need to make sure that you don't go over the, eye, the eyebrows. Because if you go over the eyebrows and they start to get a bit blurred, then they, it doesn't look quite right. Now I'll move over to the cheek area here. Now the next rule of thumb to keep in mind is that whenever you're running over a shadow or a highlight, you need to make sure that you're running in the direction of that shadow or highlight in order to keep, keep it in its exact same place so that, so that the shadows remain in the same place as do the highlights. So here I've just about finished smoothing out the face and if I give you a quick before and after, before and after, you can see that a lot of the grain, a lot of the, the pores and the fine hairs on the cheeks have virtually disappeared. Now the next area of concern which I wanted to point out are the fine hairs on Rebecca's tummy. So if I zoom in right here and these fine hairs are pretty prominent so what I need to do is increase my brush size a little bit and it's going to take a little while to remove these. But once again, we can remove them if we just spend a little bit of time on them. So option click, sweep. Option click, sweep. And I'm taking the time to, I'm making the point of running with the anatomy of the body. So I'm actually curling the brush, my brush stroke. So it runs with the curve of the muscles of the body. And as you can see, the hairs are quite quickly disappearing. Now I don't want to go over the bikini too much here, but if I do, it's no big deal. I can just, once again, erase it out with the eraser tool if I happen to go over the bikini bottoms here. And as you can see, 
the hairs are rapidly disappearing. So quick before and after, before and after. As it turns out, I have gone, gone over the, the bikini bottoms here, before and after. So later on, I can just grab the My Razor tool by hitting the E key and once again, just brushing that overlap out, just like that. And so I'll just go ahead and continue smoothing out the tummy here. So here we are at the legs, and uh, as you can see, there are all these little fine pores floating down the thighs, and if I scroll down, down along the calves here as well. And this is probably a pretty good time to point out the importance of when you're using this technique, you should always run your brush in the direction of the way the body's going, or along the anatomy. That way, you will retain such features as this highlight, which is running down the side of the thigh, and also this darker patch, this darker shadow, or whatever you want to call it, running down the front of the thigh as well. And also, we have to remember that we want to keep the brush size about a third of the width of the area that you're trying to smooth out, okay? So we're going to increase the brush size a little bit more by hitting the right bracket key to about, say, say there. And once again, option click and stroke. Option click, sweep. Option click, sweep. Just remember to go along with the shadows so you're retaining the highlights and the shadows and all you're really doing is smoothing out the area and not losing any important uh, features. And you might notice that there's a slight ghosting effect. If I do a quick before and after, before and after, along this area, there's a slight ghosting effect happening at the moment. But that's okay because the more you run the brush over, the more you option click and stroke, that ghosting effect will eventually disappear or fairly quickly disappear. I'll just do that right now, option click, and already that ghosting effect is starting to disappear. Now, there are these slight blotchy areas which you can see around here, it might be a bruise, and a few other places. And this is what I mean by, with this technique, you can actually get rid of those, whereas with the surface blur, those sort of blotchy areas would, would remain. And all you have to do in that instance is to just sample a slightly lighter area, lighter area, like say, the one just below it, and option click that, and bring it up to the bruised area, and just run it over, over that area, and that bruise will or whatever it is, that slight discoloration will, will very quickly disappear. And that area is pretty much cleared up already. So we'll just continue running along the anatomy here. And you can see that the skin is very quickly becoming very smooth. And yet we still have this lovely lighter area here. So I'll go ahead and continue smoothing out this leg. Now as I come to the calves, we have the same pores and things that we need to get rid of. And this is also a pr probably a pretty good time to also explain a slightly different variation of this technique. And that is, instead of using the stamp tool, you can also get away with using the brush tool. And just as a point of interest, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll quickly explain that to you now. So the first thing we need to do is get onto the eyedropper tool. So I'll we'll just hit the I key. And up here, um, I like to ha normally have it by about 11 by 11 average. That way we've got a decent sized sample area to ensure that we get a, get a good generalization of the color. And now we get onto the brush tool by hitting the B key. I'll increase the brush size to about, say, there. And in this instance, it's the same technique. So what we're doing is we're option clicking and then doing a sweep in the direction that the body's going. And so what I'll do is option click but this time, instead of having the little target area that pops up, on the brush tool, you end up with this little eyedropper tool, so it samples that color. So hold down the option key, click, and you'll see that down here, in our foreground color, we get a, an 11 by 11 pixel sample of that tone of skin right there on the calf. So we're currently at 100%, and what I really need to, need to do is bring my opacity right down. So once again, I'll bring it down to about 21%, so I'll hit 21 and we have that opacity right there. And so just as with the clone tool, we have to make sure that we option click in between every brush stroke to ensure that we get an accurate color sample of every part of the leg as we're painting it. So option click, sweep, option click, sweep, and so on. So if I do a quick before and after, before and after, you can see that that's a pretty good technique 
or a pretty good substitute technique to the clone tool. So I'm going to, going to go ahead and finish smoothing out the skin. So here we are, I've finished smoothing all the skin. And if I quickly zoom in, command space bar, click and drag on Rebecca's face. Go in a little bit closer. Quick before and after, before and after. Now I'll just scroll down to the chest area. Before and after. And you can see we've removed a lot of the blemishes that we wouldn't have been able to remove if we just left it to the surface blur. Panning out, command minus. Let's have a look at the shoulder, before and after. Scrolling down to the tummy, and you can see we've, we've removed all those fine hairs sitting on the tummy, underneath the belly button. And down to the thighs, before and after. And then when we come to the calves, once again we can see we've gotten rid of all the paws, or at least the outstanding ones. And uh, finally the feet, before and after. We've just smoothed out those blemishes and made, made it a little more even all over. Command zero to fit to window. Now, as I explained in the last tutorial, the one side effect of smoothing skin is that generally you tend to lose a lot of the grain. And when you do that, it tends to have a slightly artificial look. For example, if I zoom in on the chest area, we can see that this skin is super smooth before and after. Now, it's a vast improvement. However, it looks a little artificial, a little plastic, because it doesn't have any natural grain to it. So we have to replace that grain. And the best way to do that is to add a little bit of noise to it. So the first thing we need to do is create a new layer. So we'll hold down Command Shift N and it'll bring up our layer options box. So I'm going to rename this noise. And under mode, we'll take it down to overlay. And that'll give us this option to fill this layer with a 50% gray. So I'll tick that box and click OK. Now, here's our new layer called Noise, and it's just a, a layer filled with grey. If I option click on the eye icon, we can see that that's all it is, just some grey. And this is a, no, a good non-destructive way of applying noise, because we're not going to do it to any of our crucial layers here. We're just going to apply it to our new layer. So now we go up to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. We just have Uniform ticked. And under amount, we can play with the, with the amounts until we, we get the kind of grain that we're looking for. So if I slide it up to maybe 11, you can see that that is an outrageous amount of noise and we don't need that. So if I bring it down to say five, even that's too much, way too much. And we're going to be subtle about this. So let's just take it down to maybe three. And that's pretty good. So we don't want to go too far. And so we'll click OK. So now that looks good. We've added a little bit of noise, a little bit of grain to the entire image, but we don't want it applied to the entire image. We just want it applied to those areas which we've smoothed. And so because we've done all our smoothing on this separate skin smooth layer, the really easy fix is to command click on our skin smooth layer, and that will make a selection just of those areas that we've smoothed. And now making sure that we've got our noise layer selected, we just click add layer mask. And if I option click on the mask, we can see that that is a perfect mask just of those areas that we've smoothed. And so I'll do a quick before and after, before and after. And that is a vast improvement. Of course, if you find that the grain's a little too harsh, you can always just take down the opacity of that layer a little bit. And if I bring it down to maybe 85%, maybe even 75%. we can see that we've just added a little bit more reality to those artificially smoothed areas. And so that's how you can smooth skin using the clone or brush tool.